Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Sinatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we had an introduction about Carinibacteria. Today, we'll get more specific and talk about Carinibacterium diphtheria. We're talking pseudomembranous pharyngitis, we're talking skin infections, we're talking myocarditis and peripheral neuritis, among others. With that said, now let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Carinibacterium diphtheria is a gram-positive rod, non-spore forming, non-spore forming, aerobic, and immotile. Carini means club-shaped. Since it has short-chain mycolic acid, it is not acid-fast, unlike Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So Carinibacteria in general are gram-positive rods, non-spore forming. They are aerobic yet immotile. They are catalase-positive carbohydrate fermenters. The famous Carinibacteria include Carinibacterium diphtheria, which causes diphtheria, Carinibacterium jacium, which causes wound infection and septicemia, and endocarditis. Archaeobacterium cause wound infection and scarlet-like fever, not to be confused with scarlet fever caused by Group A beta hemolytic streptococci, also known as Streptococcus pyogenes. Trifurema wepelli causes wepel disease. Don't forget, Trifurema wepelli is periodic acid shift positive because it loves sugar. Whipple disease is characterized by weight loss, diarrhea, big time, abdominal pain, big time, joint pain, lymphadenopathy, and skin hyperpigmentation. Rothia mucy leginosa, look at the mucus in here, mucoid and sticky colonies that can adhere to your damaged heart valve, leading to subacute bacterial endocarditis. Carinibacterium diphtheria has four biotypes, Gravis, Fanti, Intermedius, and Mitis. The mighty Mitis is the one that causes the most human diseases. Carinibacterium diphtheria is club-shaped, irregular staining, irregular shaped, variable shapes, pleomorphic, nothing constant, everything is becoming, everything is changing. Granules that stain with aniline dyes, known as metachromatic granules. What does meta mean? Change, everything is changing. Chromatic, chrome means color, that's why Google Chrome has a colorful logo. Metachromatic, changing colors, and that's why the club appears beaded, because of all of the granules. When you look at them under the microscope, they resemble Chinese letters. They can cause small zones of hemolysis, they can grow on telluride agar. In a previous video in this glorious playlist, we talked about the difference between an exotoxin and an endotoxin. To review, exotoxin is a toxin that is released from the bacterial cell versus endotoxin, which is part of the cell, part of the outer membrane of the bacteria. Carinibacterium diphtheria has an exotoxin released from the bacterial cell as the bacteria is invading your own cell. Your cell will try to metabolize the bacteria and pew, the exotoxin is released. This toxin is a protein. A protein is coded for by a gene. And this gene is introduced into the diphtheria via prophage known as beta phage or beta prophage. Just like exotoxins, diphtheria toxin is an AB toxin. A is the active part or the active subunit, has the enzyme activity, the catalytic activity, and it's so toxic to you. B subunit is for binding, binding with your own cell receptor, which will help endocytosis of the exotoxin. How does the diphtheria exotoxin affect your cell? ADP ribosylation and inhibition of elongation factor 2. Elongation factor, may he rest in peace, was responsible for elongation of the peptide chain during translation or protein synthesis. When elongation factor is inhibited, thanks to diphtheria toxin, your cell will stop functioning because everything in your cell is protein, everything that's active, I mean. Uh, receptors are proteins, channels are proteins, pumps are proteins, carriers are proteins, enzymes are proteins. Without proteins, you're toast. DNA, when I replicate it, is called DNA replication. Convert the DNA into RNA and you have transcription. Take that RNA and make proteins. This is called translation, also known as protein synthesis. For this, you need elongation factor 2, which makes the chain longer and longer and longer, so the polypeptide gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you get robust proteins. 
Diphtheria exotoxin is a protein. It's called the tox protein. Proteins are coded for by genes known as the tox gene. Who introduced the tox gene into the cell of diphtheria? The answer is lysogenic bacteriophage known as beta phage. But the opposite is also true. We can inhibit this tox gene. How come? By availability of high iron concentration which activates diphtheria toxin repressor, which represses the toxin. It represses the translation into proteins. In other words, too much iron is toxic to diphtheria. Go to hell. This is not shocking to anybody if you know that iron is also toxic to the human cell. Do you remember the Fenton reaction? Yeah. When iron is left free by the Fenton reaction, it will give you free radicals which are toxic to your cells. Back to the story of the diphtheria toxin. Diphtheria toxin is a protein. In the beginning, it is bound to leader sequence. In order for this exotoxin to be active, we need to get rid of that leader sequence. How come? Cleave it. This is the first cleavage. Now the tox protein is free. You need a second cleavage to cleave that exotoxin into subunit A and subunit B. Both are polypeptides, bound together and connected together via disulfide bond. A is active, it has the enzyme activity, the catalytic region or catalytic activity. But B is for binding, binding of the toxin to your cell receptor. What's the name of your cell receptor? Heparin binding epidermal growth factor. And just like the A subunit contained catalytic region, the B subunit contains other regions. One is called receptor binding region, the other is called translocation region. What's the function of the translocation region? The translocation region helps the catalytic region enters to your cell. How about the function of the receptor binding region? This is the first thing, to bind your cell receptor. So here is the story. Diphtheria exotoxin will bind to your receptor known as heparin binding epidermal growth factor receptor. After this binding, you need the catalytic region to enter. How can I help it enter into the cell? This is where the translocation region comes to play. It binds to your endosome and facilitates the entry of the catalytic region to your cell. This is part of the A subunit, which is active. It has catalytic enzymatic activity. It will inhibit your elongation factor too, so that you stop elongating your protein chain, so that you stop your protein synthesis. And now you're toast. This is how diphtheria exotoxin is so toxic. Have you ever wondered why diphtheria causes myocarditis and neuritis? It's because the heparin binding epidermal growth factor receptor, aka the diphtheria toxin receptor, is present on your neurons and on your myocardium. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. In the next video, we'll talk about diphtheria as a disease. You can treat it with erythromycin. If you want to learn more about erythromycin and the other antibiotics, download my antibiotics antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. I also have a surgery high yields course, an emergency medicine high yields course, a pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics course, and all sort of courses. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.